sure most people are fully aware of this by now, but I had to make a video and talk about it. This morning, I woke up and one of the first things I do is go on my Facebook and my YouTube and I saw at least five or six different articles posting about this huge, momentous news. Spider-Man is officially now a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Holy shit. This is huge. This is big. Even though this has been talked about and debated and negotiations have been going back and forth with Sony and Marvel, so maybe some people weren't shocked, but still, I was pretty surprised because it was one of those pipe dreams that, sure, as a fan, you think about and you say, yeah, that would be cool if it happened, but it's probably not going to happen. So I never really thought a whole lot about it. But knowing now that this is a reality, that this will happen, wow, I, I love it. The, the facts that are now laid out, at least from what I read, is that Spider-Man will first appear in Civil War which is coming out in 2016, technically Captain America 3. And this is exciting. I'm assuming he's not going to be a huge major part of the movie, uh, whether it's just a teaser, uh, shows up for a second, one scene, or if it is just an after credits thing. Either way, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome just to see Spider-Man in Marvel movies. Spider-Man for years, for the longest time, was known, and I'm sure to some people still is known as Marvel's biggest superhero. I, I've debated with my friends over the more recent years whether or not Spider-Man is still Marvel's number one hero, if Iron Man has now overtaken that with his huge popularity. But whether that's true or not, whether Spider-Man has actually maybe fallen a little bit as far as popularity, thanks to Sony, I think that all changes now. Marvel will do right by Spider-Man. Marvel will make Spider-Man feel important again, feel awesome again, and this is why it's exciting. Also, we're going to get a solo Spider-Man movie in 2017. I'm assuming it's another reboot. And obviously, I mean, this goes without saying, I don't want origin again. I don't. And I'm pretty sure Marvel won't do that. I'm sure Marvel knows by this point that we're sick of the origin. We've seen it two times in 10 years. That's ridiculous. So I think they're going to do right by the fans. And they're going to have him as Spider-Man at the very beginning. You can do flashbacks. You can do moments of talking about the origin or Uncle Ben and stuff. But I don't want to see it all play out. This also means that Andrew Garfield is gone. He's out. It's official. I mean... It's And some people will like that. Some people don't like Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. I really like him as Spider-Man. In fact, I'm going to say right now, he's a better Spider-Man than Tobey Maguire. And it's, you know, it's <laughs> that's not a popular statement. I will say that Tobey was probably a better Peter Parker. He was more nerdy and, and maybe more viable as a traditional Peter Parker. That I grew up with, but Garfield was such a great actor. He he was funny, he was entertaining, hilarious as Spider-Man. You can't really blame him himself for what you might have negative to say about his actual movies. And I haven't seen this as of today, but I remember reading a couple weeks ago that this actor, Logan Lerman, was the front runner for Marvel, who they wanted to be Spider-Man now. I think he was in the Percy Jackson movies, which I haven't watched that, but he was in Fury with Brad Pitt, which he was really good in. So I can see it. He looks young enough that he could probably pull off being a teenager or an older teenager, high school. And so if that's the case, then that's awesome. Also, the Sinister Six movie is delayed, which goes without saying, especially if we're not going to be continuing the Amazing Spider-Man universe. Well, why would you do that movie? I mean, you could still do the movie and just have it with your same villains, but just the circumstances are different. You're not going to have Dane DeHaan as Green Goblin, for example. But I guess it still means that they want to do it somehow. And I was never against, really, the Sinister Six movie. I'm more curious about it, almost like how I'm curious about the Suicide Squad, even though I have more high hopes for that. So... Okay, fine, but that poses the question on what happens now to the Venom 
movie, which was very highly anticipated. Sure, for me, I wanted to see Venom introduced as a villain first, before you spin him off as an anti-hero in his own movie. But I also thought, hey, at least we're going to get Venom, finally, and hopefully done right. Now that's up in the air, and that's probably one of the few things that might suck if they do scrap the Venom movie, because how many times has the Venom movie been scrapped and start back on and then scrapped again? They were supposed to be a female uh, character in the Spider-Man universe getting her own movie. People assumed it was Black Cat. I don't know. I would have been into that, but if we don't get that movie, I'm not really heartbroken over it. I want to take a second and mention the fact that the Amazing Spider-Man movie universe is done. It's over. We only got the two movies. They clearly were setting up for a lot more to happen with that franchise. And in some ways, that sucks. I mean, I'm not crying over it. I'm not depressed over it. I am excited to see where we go now. But it just it sucks because... Some of the things I loved about those movies, they're not perfect, but I loved certain things about it. The Gwen Stacy and Peter relationship, Emma Stone was amazing, and we just came off of killing her. And the next movie was supposed to be the introduction of Mary Jane. So I guess it's just like, well, we've already gone through all of that. I don't want the new movie to, even if they don't do Origin, to not redo Gwen all over again, you know, or you don't really want to sit through that. I would like, in a perfect world, to introduce Mary Jane in this new movie. You can sort of allude to the fact that maybe the Gwen thing happened. Almost like Batman Forever. How Batman Forever is kind of, sort of, a sequel to Batman 89 and Batman Returns, but it's not. They might reference things, it might have certain same actors, but it also is its own completely different thing. So I hope that's more what they do. I hope it's just fresh start, Spider-Man, Mary Jane. Let's try to stay away from the same villains. I don't need to see Green Goblin anymore. Uh, but in any other event, this is, this is exciting. This is huge. This is major. This is something that ever since I was a kid, you know, when I watched the, the Spider-Man cartoon, did I see Iron Man and War Machine show up, Captain America show up to help Spider-Man out just randomly because New York was all one superhero thing. And for the movies, it's just, it's something I, I didn't think I'd ever see. Wow. These next couple years are going to be phenomenal. I mean, I know people are, are DC lovers and I know that they're, they have high hopes for what they're going to do with the Justice League, and I do too, but Marvel just yet another leap and bounds, and, and they're so far ahead of the game with Spider-Man added now. This is exciting. I, I love it. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below what do you think of this news? What do you think will happen now with the universe? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later.